Endovenous laser treatment for varicose veins is a technique which uses thermal ablation of varicose veins to control venous reflux. Varicose veins are caused by venous reflux in the veins of the lower limb. People with varicose veins have what is called associated reflux in the superficial venous system. Reflux is used to describe the flow of blood in the wrong direction and under the influence of gravity. Reflux can be demonstrated using continuous wave Doppler and or duplex ultrasound on the greater saphenous vein, lesser saphenous vein or truncal varicosities. When blood flows the wrong direction in the vein, it often gets trapped and causes distension and weakness of the vein wall causing what is known as a varicose vein. As we can see in this illustration, valves which are one-way valves in the veins of the lower limb prevent blood from flowing under the influence of gravity in the wrong direction, which is downhill. Competent valves allow blood to flow back towards the heart and prevent blood from flowing in the reverse direction down towards the foot. Incompetent valves do not close properly and allow blood to flow in the wrong direction. Ultrasound image of the saphenofemoral junction can be demonstrated with the use of B-mode ultrasound scanning. This is often used by physicians to demonstrate the saphenofemoral junction and in conjunction with colour flow Doppler can demonstrate venous reflux through the valve which protects the saphenofemoral junction. There are several treatments for varicose veins. In general, incompetence in the greater saphenous vein is treated by surgical removal and ligation of the saphenofemoral junction. This requires a stay in hospital, cuts and occasionally a painful recovery. This operation is associated with stripping of the long saphenous vein in the thigh segment from the groin to the knee. Other treatments for ablation of varicose veins involve sclerotherapy and transcatheter injection of chemical sclerosants. The durability of these treatments is not as good as surgery or other forms of ablation of the long saphenous vein. Endovenous laser treatment is performed using a standard sterile protocol. The greater saphenous vein is visualised under ultrasound. A needle is inserted into the vein, a guide wire is then inserted into the vein and an introducer sheath is placed over the guide wire and advanced through the long saphenous vein under continued ultrasound guidance. The intraluminal position is confirmed by aspiration of non-pulsatile venous blood and visualisation with ultrasound. A sterile bare tip laser fibre, 600 microns in diameter, is introduced into the vein through the sheath. The fibre is advanced up to the proximal saphenofemoral junction and confirmed with ultrasound visualisation. It is further confirmed by noting the visual translucent laser aiming beam. Anesthesia is injected around the length of the greater saphenous vein. Finger pressure is applied to oppose the vessel walls at the treatment site. The laser system will provide 5 to 15 watts of laser energy in 1 to 4 second bursts followed by incremental withdrawal of the laser fibre until the entire vein has been treated. A compression stocking will be worn until the initial follow-up visit and then for a minimum of one week following the treatment. In this manner, heat generated by the laser beam causes heat damage to the wall of the greater saphenous vein and creates a controlled burn in the length of the saphenous vein from the groin down to the knee. Here we see the state of varicose veins preoperatively in superficial veins behind the knee on the right leg. The initial operation has caused some bruising but not extensive and the varicose veins caused by reflux have been controlled. At three month follow-up we can see bruising has gone completely, there are no residual varicose veins and the lower limb has returned almost to normal. Similar results are obtained in other sites when laser therapy has been used and once venous reflux from the saphenofemoral system is controlled, varicose veins usually disappear. Here we see other cases where the long saphenous vein has been treated with before and after pictures demonstrating very satisfactory control of varicosities with laser treatment of the long saphenous system. This slide compares the results from surgical stripping and treatment of the varicose veins with EVLT. You will see the amount of symptoms related to EVLT are very much less than with surgery and the length of time to recovery is much shorter with EVLT.
In this diagram, we see a flebogram in which the laser fibre has been inserted up to the saphenofemoral junction. Contrast has been injected to demonstrate the position of the laser fibre in conjunction with the saphenofemoral junction and its communication with the deep venous system. This shows the position of a guide wire immediately prior to injection of local anaesthetic around the long saphenous vein. A similar treatment is conducted for the short saphenous system and we see here a guide wire that has been placed in the short saphenous system up to the saphenopopliteal junction from the above knee ankle short saphenous vein. Contrast has been injected through the sheath and we can see that there is reflux into the vein from the veins of the short saphenous system. Laser fibre is inserted up the short saphenous system to the saphenopopliteal junction. Ultrasound is then used to distend the tissues around the laser fibre using a local anaesthetic to produce tumescent anaesthesia. As you can see, the results for endovenous laser therapy of varicose veins is very similar to surgery with the exception that the recovery phase is very much shortened and the amount of post-operative pain is less than surgery. The results obtained for laser therapy are equivalent to surgical treatment with the exception of the rapid recovery.